this here was an important item in my last video and I think it deserves expanding upon. Here in the Bowles transcript, as I described earlier, it is written that the dispatcher says 10438, are you still en route to court? But in the recording we have, you cannot hear, are you still en route to court? 10-4. And as I said in that video, you can tell that the dispatcher said more than 10438 because 38 responded with a 104. And that means the dispatcher either asked him something like, Are you still en route to court? or directed him to go ahead and go en route to court. You wouldn't say 10-4 in, in response to somebody else saying 10-4. You would only say 10-4 if you were answering a question or acknowledging a command. And as I said, you cannot hear what the dispatcher says because the dispatcher muted the Jefferson Tower receiver. And if you want the details of that, you should go look at that video. And I also concluded in that video, presented my conclusion, that Bowles, when he wrote this transcript, understood that the dispatcher had muted the Jefferson Tower receiver. And so he decided to cover that up by writing in what he presumed the dispatcher to have said. And so in the transcript, it makes sense. So Bowles has covered his tracks here, or covered the tracks of the dispatcher, so long as you don't hear the recording. But if you hear the recording, you realize there's no way Bowles could have heard that on the recording. And keeping that in mind, let's move along to this Larry J. Sabato commissioned project from Sonalus Corporation for the 50th anniversary Larry wanted to write a book and he wanted to uh, to commission a study of the Dictabelt recording and uh, he was interested I think in the question of what's called the acoustics evidence theory which I think was just a hoax all along but anyway he commissioned Sonalists Corporation to study this matter and this is a PDF conducted of that study. And if we scroll through it, we can see that it seems to be a very competent, very thorough study or report of the study. It's got these nice graphs in it. And uh, they talk about sound of sound technical sound things they've got these visual depictions of the sound which are very nice I mean look at that uh, it's a very nice report to, to study I, I can't give details right now because it was years ago since I read it but I remember these things and it seems to be very competent very technical very thorough a real nice job was done here and you see they They've even they've got the motorcycle noise graphed and they've got the they've got different information on what kind of motorcycle motors there were and they've folk they've they've uh, got the exact motor it was that produced this sound really really thorough and technical. I think you can find this online. You can download this PDF and read it for yourself, and I suggest that you do. Now, getting down to here, they start to talk about specifics, about specific transmissions. And they actually mention this one that I have in mind that I've been talking about. And look at this. Sonalists also hears, are you still en route to court? And they note that Bowles also heard that. I've been talking about the Bowles transcript here. And there's another transcript made, either made by or provided by a captain or a 
Inspector Sawyer, and they say emits, are you still en route to court? Sawyer didn't hear that, apparently, because he didn't write it down in his transcript. And I played it for you. There's nothing there to hear. You cannot hear, are you still en route to court? And yet Sonalist, Sonalist says it is there. That is utterly bizarre. And you think, well, maybe they can hear it. Maybe they've got their techniques to tease it out. But no, when they do that, I mean, look at the one that's two, uh, two numbers down there. It says Market Hall, possibly Market Office. By the way, this is the one that's Oswald. It's not Market Hall or Market Office. But anyway, because it's something they're not sure about, they expound upon it. They talk about it. But 38, 10438, are you still en route to court? The part you can't hear on the recording, they don't even make any notation about it. It's as if it's plain as day. Of course it's there. But it's not there. And Sonalists says it is there. So Sonalist is also covering this up, just the way Bowles did. It's not on the recording, but Sonalists says that it is. And who is Sonalists? Well, the guys that wrote the report in 2013 are Charles Olson and Scott Martin of Sonalists Incorporated. Sonalists does various things, but the main thing seems to be they make combat simulations. And if you read the little blurb here, the name Sonalist is derived from Sonar Analyst. It was started by a guy from in the Navy, uh, which is how the company began supporting the Department of Defense almost 50 years ago. Since then, we have grown to support every branch of the U.S. military and the Coast Guard, with approximately 90% of the company's business conducted with the federal government. So Sonalus is a defense contractor completely dependent upon the business they get, or almost completely dependent, but essentially completely dependent. Without that business, they would go broke. Completely dependent on the federal government. And they are lying about the Dictabelt recording in order to support the lie by Captain Bowles that you can hear 38, are you still en route to court, when you cannot hear that on the recording. And they're both lying to support the, the uh, hiding the fact that the dispatcher muted the Jefferson Tower receiver so that they could sabotage the Dallas police radio and aid the assassins in Dealey Plaza to communicate with each other in order to murder the president. Sonalist Corporation is covering up the murder of the president still in 2013. 10 430. But Sonalists are not the only ones continuing to cover up. Steve Barber became very well known in assassination research circles when in the 1970s he heard on the gallery magazine version of the Dictavelt recording a little excerpt on this vinyl plastic sort of disc that you could that was in the magazine you could put on your turntable and play he said that he heard this very hard to hear crosstalk I'm not going to get, explain it all, but basically it proved that uh, where the uh, scientists had said the shots were on the Dictabelt recording uh, was in the wrong place, so they couldn't have been the shots. They, uh, I think uh, what it means is the part of the recording they're talking about occurred after the assassination. I don't want to get into that, but Steve Barber became very well known because of this, because he was the one who torpedoed the acoustics evidence theory. Well, I actually encountered Steve Barber online in one of the news groups on the JFK assassination topic back in 2018, and I don't remember exactly what he said, but I wrote this uh, after he said it. Why, and this was my comment that I was making, a part of my comment. Why did Bowles write down, are you still en route to court? Steve dodges that by saying he made a mistake. 
Go listen to it yourself and tell me that makes sense. And if Bowles did simply make a mistake, how is it that sonalists made the same mistake decades later? They wrote the same thing in their transcript with no explanation of how they heard it. I'm listening to the same recording they used. You can't hear that on there. Steve, well, let's not get into Catman Do. <laughs> how the hell do Bowles and sonalists hear Are You Still on Route to Court? With no explanation, Bowles, in theory, could have asked the dispatcher what he said, though that should be noted if he did. But how does sonalists hear it? And Steve Barber had no answer. He said Bowles made a mistake. Steve apparently admitted to me that he can't hear that on there. And Steve is the one who could hear those little crosstalk things that torpedo the acoustics ev evidence theory. Now, I happen to think he was right about that. The acoustics evidence theory was a hoax from the beginning, I think. But what I'm talking about here is that he, Steve Barber, is uh, either lying or playing dumb in order to help cover up the murder of the president. And I suspect that he was uh, contracted to torpedo the acoustics evidence theory because I think that whole thing was a hoax just to put this out there and then to knock it down so that nobody would ever, you know, nobody with anything to lose would ever propose a theory again. So I think this item is something of a gem because it shows uh, that it, one, it helps to prove that the dispatcher did sabotage the radio system in order to murder the president. It proves that Captain Bowles lied about it in order to cover up murdering the president. It proves that sonalists lied about it in order to cover up murdering the president. And even Steve Barber, uh, I don't know if, I don't know what Steve Barber knew about anything, but I think he was being dishonest and helping to cover up the murder of the president. So that's why I wanted to make this video because this is a gem. Uh, not my video, but I mean this little piece of data, this transmission has been covered up uh, at least uh, through 2018 and probably through the current moment.